Hi everyone, welcome to the Spelling Cat Patreon video. I'm Giancarlo and today I'm going to talk to you about how we might use Microsoft Flight Simulator to help with geolocations using a real life example. Now, if you don't know, this is a game that came out earlier this year and is played on a one-to-one -one representation of the planet. The game pulls data from different sources including the Microsoft Azure Cloud Computing Platform and it's populated with trees, rivers, as well as AI-generated and hand-modeled buildings that create villages, towns, and even entire cities. Now, all of this got us thinking, how accurate could the game's version of the world be? If it was accurate enough, could we use it to help with geolocations like we use Google Earth Pro, for example? We did a little bit of research and we put it into an article that we published back in August. Now, one of the things that caught our attention the most about the game is that you're not limited to just flying around in your airplane. The game has a cinematic camera feature that lets you set up these kinds of scenic shots. And it even lets you make changes to the weather and time of day on the fly. So the potential for this game to be useful in geolocation is definitely there, but we found that in practice, the results are mixed at best. Let's go through a real life example to show you how this works in practice. Back in early October, a Telegram channel associated with Wagner, the Russian private military contractor, shared an image that suggested that they were operating in Nagorno-Karabakh. If authentic, this picture would have been the first solid piece of evidence of Russian boots on the ground in this conflict. And so we got to geolocating. My colleague Eric Toller found that there was a mountain range in the Nagorno-Karabakh region just east of the city of Shusha that looked like it was a good candidate for the mountain seen in the picture. On Google Earth Pro, this is what that location looks like. The range didn't fully match the one seen in the image, but it was close enough that we could put it in the maybe pile. In this composite shot, you can see that the general shape of the mountain appears to match that which is seen in the image, but there's some small details that don't quite line up. As it turns out, another open source researcher on Twitter named Samir had also seen the image in the Telegram channel and he was able to geolocate the mountain range seen in the image to a location in Syria, in the Latvia region. This is what that region looks like in Google Earth Pro. In this comparison shot, you can see that the mountains much more closely resemble each other and it is because they are in fact the same. In particular, you can see on the left side of the mountain, there's a bit of a clearing that is very visible on both the image in the Telegram channel and the mountain that appears in Google Earth Pro. So now to find these same spots in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is the area that we're interested in, and right now we're looking at it in Google Maps. So what we need to do is to look at features around the spot that we're interested in so we can spot them in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So here, for example, we can see that in this region, the area that we're interested in is just south of a city that's located here. And if we take a look even a little bit north from here, we'll notice that there's an airport. And that is gonna be really useful to us because we can find this airport in Microsoft Flight Simulator, spawn our aircraft in this area, and then it will just be a matter of moving south from that location until we get to the desired spot, which again is marked by the red marker here in Google Maps. Now to get started with geolocating in Microsoft Flight Simulator, all you do is you navigate to the area that you're interested in. And in this case, as I said, we're lucky because there's an airport in the region. So if I start to type in the name of the airport, I see that it comes up and I don't actually have to spawn my aircraft in the airport. I could spawn in the air. So I'm just selecting a spot around the airport. And it's also really important that you change the time of day to daytime so that you can actually see the spot that you're looking for. And I'm also changing the weather to clear to also help with the visibility. Now that we're in the air, all I have to do is click ready to fly. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exit the cockpit because I'm not interested in the game as a flight game. I'm interested in it as a geospatial tool. I press insert. That takes me out of the airplane. The airplane is frozen in the sky and I'm now free to navigate this area as I wish. And the first thing I'm gonna notice is that there's a airport here. This is the same one that we saw in Google Maps. And I know that south of this airport, there is a city 
south of that city, there's a smaller city. And just to the east of that is the mountain range that I'm interested in. So I'm navigating south. I've left the airplane parked in the sky. I see the big city here. Just a little bit south from there. I'll see the other urban development, which we can see here on the left side of the screen. And just to the east of there is the mountain range that initially we thought could be the one from which the picture on the Telegram channel was taken. And if I position the camera very carefully without smashing into the ground, hopefully I can get a vantage point that lines up with what we saw in the Telegram image, which is this one right here. Now, for the sake of a comparison, we can see the mountain range as it appears in Google Earth Pro, as it appeared in the image that was shared in the Telegram channel, and as it appeared in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, you'll notice that one of the big differences between the Microsoft Flight Simulator image and the Google Earth image is that the Flight Simulator image is populated with trees. These are inserted by an AI that decides where the trees are going to be located in the game. And there's other differences as well, as for example, is the fact that the field of view is different in the game than it is in Google Earth Pro. Moving on to the mountain in Syria, we can do the same thing that we did for the mountain in Nagorno-Karabakh. Now, this is going to be a little bit more challenging because there aren't as many urban areas around this point that we're interested in as there were in Nagorno-Karabakh. So because Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't have a location tool like Google Earth Pro, we have to navigate by eye. And here I'm looking at the coastline because I'm going to try to line up the spot that we're interested in in the game with the contours of the coastline. I also notice that there's an urban area just north of the point that we're interested in. But in general, this is going to be a little bit trickier. The scenery is a lot busier. There's more earthworks and agricultural areas that just make it a busier scene. It really helps if you have something like a second screen or even just Google Maps opened on your phone when you do this. Because what I'm doing right now is I'm matching the contour of the coastline in the game to what I see in Google Maps and I'm estimating where the point that I'm interested in is located. Once I'm in the air, I'm going to go through the same motions as I did before. I'm going to freeze my airplane in the sky. I'm going to press insert so that I enter camera mode and now I'm free to move around as I wish. What I'm trying to do now is find landmarks, rivers, anything that will help me determine exactly where my airplane is located because that's going to help me find the spot that I'm interested in. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is going to take a little bit of a longer time than the Nagorno-Karabakh example because the ground is a little bit busier than it was in the previous example. So right now I'm lining up my map to the images that I see in the game. I'm trying to navigate the camera to a point where I think I'm roughly in the general area. And this is the area right here. This is where I think that maybe the mountain range that we saw in the Telegram channel that Samir found on Twitter is located. So I'm zooming in. I'm looking really carefully at my second screen because I'm comparing features in the landscape to what I see in the game. I'm going to fast forward to this next area because as I said, it did take me a couple of minutes to be sure that I was in the right spot, but eventually I found it and it was located right here where my cursor is. And all I do from this point on is navigate the camera and make sure to smash it on the ground again. And I'm lining up the shot to the mountain range in the background, which is the one that was seen in the telegram photo. So again, to compare, here is the mountain in Google Earth Pro. Here it is in the Telegram channel. And here it is in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now here we see some pretty substantial differences. The main one being that the game's AI decided to put trees everywhere. Whereas we can see both in the Telegram image and in Google Earth Pro, that this is actually not a heavily forested area. So these trees are throwing off the geolocation. They're adding elements to the scene that are not actually there. So what does this mean for the game as a tool of geolocation? 
Well, it means that it's not perfect and it might not be useful to us in many cases. But I think that there are still other features in the game that are interesting that can potentially help in an investigation at some point in the future. For example, the game's dynamic weather and lighting system could be useful in helping us determine when a particular image was taken, considering the fact that you can change these settings in the game with just a couple of clicks, making the process really easy and giving you a lifelike environment with which to work. While many cities in the game are hand-modeled, most of them are not. For example, Caracas, which you see here. Every building that you're looking at has been rendered by the game's AI based on satellite imagery. I think that that's a useful feature that could have repercussions for research because it might allow us to get a better feel for what a particular city looks like. Microsoft is promising to continue to improve the game, and while we wait for those improvements, at least we have a really nice, relaxing game to enjoy, and boy, do we need those. That's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and thank you for supporting us by subscribing to our Patreon. We'll see you in the next one.